So hi everyone, my name is Neve Belton and I'm a PhD student in UCG and a member of ML Labs. And today I'll be presenting a semi-supervised Siamese network for identifying bad data in medical imaging data sets. And this work was conducted with Angus Lawler and Kathleen Curran. So firstly, our problem statement. So while it is important for machine learning models to be robust to noisy data, there can exist bad data in the training data that can actually harm the model's performance. So we refer to bad data as, for example, an MRI that has no anatomical information present within the field of view. So our objective is to develop a pre-processing technique to identify this bad data so that it can be removed from the training data before further analysis. We use the MRNet dataset for this study, and this is an open source new MRI dataset, and we use the data that was acquired from the sagittal plane. So here is an example of what we define as bad data. So this is an MRI acquired from the sagittal data, and as you can see, as you move through the images, there is no anatomical information present within the field of view. So next we have our proposed method. So our proposed method involved randomly sampling 20 MRIs from the data set. And these were reviewed by a non-expert to ensure that the major anatomical structures are present within the field of view. And then we trained a Siamese network. So two reference MRIs were randomly sampled from the reference set and input into a pre-trained AlexNet uh, with shared weights. And then we get a one-dimensional feature vector representation for each MRI. And then we calculate the Euclidean distance. So as we know that all the MRIs in the reference set are normal, we know that the ground truth Euclidean distance between MRIs is zero. And then this model was trained using contrastive loss. So therefore, our model is trained with only 20 MRIs from one class. The next step was testing. So this involved um, inputting all the MRIs in the test set into a pre-trained AlexNet and getting your one dimensional feature vector representation for each MRI. We then calculated the Euclidean distance between this feature vector and each of the feature vectors in the reference set, and then we got the mean Euclidean distance. So here you can see the five MRIs with the largest mean Euclidean distance. And you can see that the first and second MRI contain no relevant anatomical information. And you can see that the third and fifth MRI are of very poor quality, and these could be referred to an expert to investigate if they should be removed from the data set. And the fourth one is an MRI acquired from the axial plane that has been mistakenly included in the sagittal plane data. Additionally, in example A, the model also identified a slice acquired from the coronal plane that has also been mistakenly included in the sagittal plane data. And in example B, it identified an MRI where the major anatomical structures are largely, are largely outside of the field of view. So we compared our proposed method with the well-known unsupervised technique, isolation forest, and we calculated the AUC sensitivity and specificity. We calculated the sensitivity based on a threshold that was based on the largest Euclidean distance between reference MRIs. So although our Siamese network trains on only 20 MRIs and the isolation forest was trained on 500 MRIs, our proposed method outperforms isolation forest. We also conducted a sensitivity analysis of the model's performance to the selection of reference MRIs. And this showed that the AUC of the model stayed within the AUC interval of 0.983 to 0.989. So the advantages of our proposed method is that it achieves good performance. It identifies a wide variety of bad data, meaning that it will identify MRIs where there is no anatomical information present, but it will also identify um, an axial slice that has been mistakenly included in the data. It requires only a fraction of the training data that previous methods require, and this means a less tedious labeling process in comparison to other semi-supervised techniques. Then our future work will involve looking at generalized methods of finding the optimal reference set, testing the technique on larger open source data sets, and comparing this technique to additional baseline methods. So that is everything and thank you very much.